rally. Is it gonna rally to the moon? Is it gonna tank? That's what we're gonna look at today because one of you asked me to look at rally and I'm here to serve you. So if you like today's content, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. And if you don't know me by now, my name is Jagir. I'm the award-winning author of the Extraordinary New Venture Capital Opportunity, How to Invest Like a Pro. Been trading currencies for over 15 years, featured in the best-selling book, High Probability Trading Strategies, back in 2008. But now I exclusively focus on crypto and blockchain. So you wanted rally, I'm gonna show you. So let's just have a quick look at the website. What is rally? Well, Rally is a crypto for creative communities. Creative communities, what is it? It says Rally is a platform for creators and their communities to build their own independent digital economies. So it's a platform that helps you build your own economy. But we wanna know the technicals. What's the price action? What's likely to happen next? So let's have a quick look. With Rally, the market cap is 220 million, according to CoinMarketCap, price is 77 cents, all time high is let's have a look is one dollar forty so it's around 40 45 percent down from its all-time high and we've got the chart data here um which is kind of really showing us that there's a nice move up and then we've had this big correction i'm seeing this as an a b c correction and then we've got this new movement to the upside and is that potentially the reversal of the trend um it's listed on coinbase which is a big deal coinbase it's in quite a few exchanges Hence, it's got a lot of volume. It's got a lot of volume, quite a few different exchanges. But we're going to jump into TradingView to see this. Actually, I might just, I might actually use Dex Tools, actually, Dex Tools, because I was on TradingView earlier having a quick look, and the data, the data that it gives me, it only gives me this much data, which is sometimes annoying when you're using TradingView because it was listed on Qcoin. It would have been on the 18th of March. But as you saw with CoinMarketCap, we had more data and this is important data. So we want to have this. Um, so let me just copy the contract address so we can do that by clicking here. We're going to jump over to Dex tools. I find Dex tools very handy when I'm looking at if I need all the information. So it should give us, let's see if it does all the data or more data. Let's see. Yes. Yes, it does. Good, good. So I'm just going to go to a daily chart. I'm just going to see if it does still give me all the data. Yes, yes, that's the data that I need. Great, great. That's helpful. Very helpful, in fact. Um, I'm just going to quickly change the settings as well, just so you can get the consistency of what I normally use. So it's a white background. Uh, Dextools never saves my settings, so that's just, that's what it is. So what I'm looking at with Rally here is, you know, let's just bring up Fibonacci and Elliott Wave. Elliott Wave, we're always looking for is, does this template of Elliott Waves fit onto Rally? This one, two, three, four, five, and then an ABC correction. And you'll find in crypto, 50, 60% of the time, you'll find that the pattern is really identifiable, and other times it's not. And if you haven't already, take my free Elliott Wave and Fibonacci Masterclass. It's phenomenal, because I teach you all of this. Everything that you see me do, I teach you how to do it yourself, because I only do around seven videos a week, and I know my, my list has got you know, all the recommendations or the coins you want. I just cannot do yourself before. Let me just teach you how to do it. So let's look at Rally. Let's start with Elliott Wave Count. So we're looking at the pattern first of all. If I can find the tool, here we go. And we're gonna go here. But So here we see a nice clear one, two, three, four, five. Look, textbook, textbook, right? Textbook, Elliott Wave Count, five wave count. And let's just change this to primary count so that it just becomes a bit bigger really clear. Now we've got the data, but we can also just look at what is a typical correction. So we're going to, we're going to look at this part of the market, but we can first just go, if we only had this much data down here, we could actually anticipate what is the correction likely to be ahead of time. And this is good practice because you want to be able to do this ahead of time. So we're going to take this low to this high and typical corrections are I got, I got the sunlight on my screen, so I can, I can just about see my screen. 50, 62. So we've got 50, 62%. And we're gonna remove this one here. There we go. So these are the typical ranges. But we can also do a time retracement, right? And we're just looking at a macro picture at the moment, macro. So we're gonna take this low. You have to make a decision on where is the low. I think I'm gonna choose it from here. And the two ratios that I'm looking for is 50%. Of the move up 
to 100% of the move up. All right, so now we've got this very broad, oh, there it is, there it is, this here. The line's not that clear, let me make it blue. Yeah, we'll make it a bit thicker as well, there we go. Right, so ahead of time, we had this zone, and you can see Riley went nicely into the zone. If I can grab, there we go. This is the correction zone that we're looking for. Now, oh, it went perfectly, yeah, it went here. It made a little lower low, lower low, but what we're seeing here is now a nice, well, it's not as clean as we would like it, but it looks like a nice A, B, it's like a one, two, three, four, five, obviously. So it's gone a bit beyond the 100%. So it's an extreme in price. When it goes beyond 100%, the next one is the 1.618. But that gives us enough information to say this looks like, and then I'm gonna summarize this so you can get a really clear viewpoint on a rally. But also how you can do the same thing. So this looks like a wave one up here. This down here looks like a wave two. Put a question mark there because even though we've got a nice movement to the upside, we need these swing highs to get taken out. And now we're gonna get focused on what's happening right now, right now. So we can, actually we can zoom in a bit more here. We can do it like this. All right, the first thing that I'm noticing with the recent move is that rally is rallying, right? Rally is rallying. What do I mean by that? Well, the trend has clearly reversed because this movement to the upside is bigger than any other previous move to the upside in this movement to the downside. So that means there's an overbalance of price. And that's one of the first signals. It's a bit of a lagging signal because it has to go to a certain height before we can see it as a signal. But it's one of the first signals that there's a trend reversal. And what do I mean by trend reversal? Well, the trend was going down and now it's reversed and the overall trend is now up. Up. So that's what we can expect. So that's really, really important. The second signal that the trend is reversed is that the last swing high, this one and this one has been exceeded and the price has closed above it. So there's two clear things that says, look, this low, this wave two low should hold. Doesn't mean it will, it just means it probably suggests that it will. Right, we can also just take out these two because 78.6 was the key one. Yeah, hopefully that's making sense. So now we can delete this information now we want to focus on more recent price action. We want to go, okay, happy with that. What's the larger degree expectations for rally? Now, I don't really care that it's rally. I'm just looking at the psychology of buying and selling. Psychology of buying and selling. That's what I'm looking at here. You know, I'm not even looking at too much of the fundamentals of rally. We're just looking at psychology of buying and selling. Because we've got to understand most markets are 80, 90% speculation. Um, so it's independent. In a, way, in a way, so we can look at charts just independently, just via the technicals. So let's just now do a wave three high level projection to so get a really broad view of what's likely to occur with rally, especially if we have a continuation of the bull market. A typical wave three is 1.618. Let's just change it to green. Right, so we're expecting a price target of $2.53 and today's price is around 77 cents, right? That's the macro picture. How long would it normally take? Well, wave threes, the minimum time it tends to take is the same time it takes to form a wave one. So if we just measure this wave one, so we're looking at a really big picture here before we get a bit more narrow on the immediate time frame. And then the extended time frame, again, we're gonna keep it quite broad, is the time it takes for the wave one to the wave two to complete. And now we've got this broad time range between October 20th to February 4th. Now, as the market unfolds and we get more information, get more swings, we can narrow that down. But at this stage, we don't have that information. But we can say, look, this is the opinion of the market. That's what we expect. Now, let's just finish up on the short term. And by the way, if you want to learn how to do this, do take my Edit Wave and Fibonacci free masterclass because I teach you how to do this in an objective way because what we're looking to do is remove the emotions out of buying and selling, have proper risk management so you can see the markets for what it is, for what it is. All right, now let's just zoom right the way in to this immediate, 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 immediate movement. All right, the, the pattern's not that clear, but what I'm seeing is because this part of the market here is quite impulsive, it's quite impulsive, 
right? What I mean by impulsive is when the waves are overlapping, that's corrective. And when they are deep and they're not overlapping, that's impulsive. That would, on a shorter time frame, suggest that this is a trend reversal and we should expect sideways to down for the next couple of weeks. So let's just give you a really, really, really clear picture on this, on rally, looks like a nice one, two, three, four, panic buying five. Look at that, panic buying, it's like look at the, the angle of that. And then we should anticipate a correction. A correction, it's almost like exactly what we did earlier, but we're now gonna do it on a smaller time frame. We wanna do a correction, typical is 50%, 62%, and 78.6. We can do the same time retracement. So you see, I'm just repeating it for, but for a different time frame. Because once you can identify the, the likely Elliott wave count, the psychology of the masses, the herd psychology of optimism, pessimism, fear of missing out, fear and greed, all of this price action is telling us how the masses are feeling and what's likely to occur next. So now we're gonna measure the time it takes for a typical correction. And again, if you remember, can you remember the two numbers? Yep, you got it, 50% is the typical minimum. So we don't wanna assume that the correction is gonna be complete until the 27th, at least the 27th of September. Typically, we anticipate always a minimum of three waves. It can unfold as a complex correction, but again, minimum of three waves, A, B, C, something like this, and then something like this. And as we get a bit more information, as this low down here, if it gets exceeded, this low down here, if it gets exceeded, once we've got this information, we can do a bit more precise information as well in terms of the analysis. And last but not least, we should see that the momentum marries up with the low. And on the next bullish reversal, it'll probably complete the correction, possibly. But it might go a bit more complex, but we need a bit more information. So there you have it, there you have it. So if you liked today's video, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification, rally, we got a very, what we just did was a mini masterclass, by the way. That was a mini masterclass. And if you want the full masterclass, it's in the link below, because i just show you how to do this, holding pretty much nothing back. And what, but what we've got as a, let's just wrap up with, with this, right? Because this is very high level. You know, most people can't see what I'm showing you here. And you want to be able to do this for yourself, is this wave one. We've had a corrective downward movement since April. Look at this, overlapping waves. Bump, looks like a wave two. We should anticipate what should follow a wave three in a one, two, three, four, five wave sequence. And we should reach that in the zone of around, I think we actually said here, didn't we? We can actually move this over to around here. Yeah, between, we said end of September till mid, late mid October. So there you have it, rally. And again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I wanna draw it like this just so we have it on record as well. And we're likely gonna see a wave three forming like this. But just be very cautious of this time period, of this correction period, because it might be an extended correction. Um, we're not sure yet. But again, we wanna take the momentum into consideration also. Let's actually just finish on, let me just jump back into the trading view. Just wanna see the weekly momentum. Yeah, we can see that the weekly momentum here, even though we haven't got much data, is bearish. So again, sideways to down for a few weeks. And on the daily chart, again, we've got this bullish reversal, which just suggests, same thing that we just said, you know, sideways to up for the short term before we see a correction. So there you have it. If you like today's content, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification. What do you think? Do you think we're gonna see a deeper correction or do you think it's gonna go up sooner or rather than later? All right, keep up the good work, keep learning, keep practicing, take the masterclass, see you soon.